Can you tell me? Are you up something? Good girl. Look at that pretty face in the camera. So Miss Felby had to go to the vet because she couldn't eat properly. She started not being able to pick any food up. So we went to the vet to have her teeth checked and her front incisors were overgrown and one of her bottom ones was cracked. So she went under for a procedure to have her teeth fixed. So they took off a couple spurs off her molars and they had to grind down her incisors, uh, get rid of that one all the way down to the crack. So her bottom incisors are very short, so she's having troubles, again, not being able to pick anything up because they're short. So I have to hand feed her because at this time, she's unable to pick up anything on her own. So we're doing feedings of syringe food, and then I hand her hay to eat. Like I just have to slip it in her mouth a little bit, and then she can grab it the rest of the way. And then same with veggies, I have to slip them into her mouth at this time. So another sign that she had is she was having like a soaked chin. You're going to see where it's all stained from veggies, but it was absolutely soaked. So all signs that she was having um, troubles. You ready? So she's doing pretty good for feeding. Uh, the first night she was, I think from all the medication from being put out, it was all weird and she wouldn't chew for me and she was just letting food fall out of her mouth so it was really frustrating and I was kind of getting upset and luckily each day as we've gone on she's getting better for allowing me to help her to eat so she seems really upset and doesn't like when I'm shoving food in her mouth but what can you do she has to eat so I try to feed her as many times as I'm available each day and it takes about an hour to feed her a decent amount. So yeah, it's a lot of time out of the day uh, to feed her. But right now, she's totally depending on me to feed her. I haven't seen her use a water bottle, but I'm assuming she does because she seems hydrated because she's always peeing a good amount. I still am syringing her extra water and there's also obviously water in the veggies and water in the syringe food. I assume she's drinking water because I don't see why that would matter if your teeth are short you can still use the spout but I haven't witnessed it myself. So no idea uh, why that one incisor was cracked but now we just have to wait so teeth grow quickly so at the one week mark which we're about four days away hopefully she'll be grabbing food by then probably two weeks they'll be fully grown and my vet said it's going to take about four or four to six weeks for us to tell what her final teeth alignment is going to be like so we're hoping by then everything's um, worn down how it's supposed to be and that her front incisors are looking good no idea what to expect and I really hope that at the end of four to six weeks they're going to be looking good because I can't imagine having to get her teeth done all the time. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It does take a long time for feeding. But what can you do, eh, Velvie? I feel really bad for her when I put down fresh hay every morning and night after I've tidied. She runs over to the hay and then tries to grab some and then as soon as she realizes she can't she goes off and sits in a corner in the bed and it's very sad. So after I've given the herd their hay and she can't eat any that's when I'm taking her out anyway for her feeding so but it just sucks. Same with veggies in the morning. She comes running for them and then realizes that she can't eat them, and it's very sad. Just waiting for the day, though, where she does grab something. That will be really exciting. So our attention span for eating isn't very long before I have to kind of 
more force her. So right now she's doing pretty good for taking them, but after, I'd say about after 10 minutes, she's kind of like, yeah, that's enough, and it's like, no girl, um, I need to pack you full of food because I can't feed you every five minutes. So I try to get her, her I'd say like 20 mils of the syringe food, and then I give her as much hay as she'll tolerate, which eventually she'll just keep shaking her head back and forth, and then I'll just let her be and put her back in the cage. So one of the tricks to hand feeding is, well, since she doesn't have teeth in the front, well, she has them, but they're really short. Normally you would go in the side, but I can put her syringe in the front, and you want to push it back until you kind of feel their molars bite down on the syringe and then slowly release the food. And every time that they're chewing, they're also swallowing. And if you don't put the syringe far enough back, you're just going to load it up in the front of their mouth and that's when it's going to be pouring out the front of their mouth and it's just, just a waste and I've had that. Good girl. Okay, we'll be back when we start the hay. Okay, so we're moving on to hay because she's just letting the syringe food kind of fall out of her mouth now. So she's had enough. So this is a little bit trickier. So I have to slip it in her mouth. And sometimes she's more willing than others. There we go. And she doesn't like to eat facing me. So I always have to kind of blindly try to find her mouth to slip it in. But once I get it in just a little way, her tongue catches it and then she pulls it back to her molars and she's good to go. So I like to get in a lot of hay so that she's still grinding her molars so they don't get overgrown. And just to help her jaw strength. So hopefully that her teeth will come in nice and lined up and nothing will be weak. And it's good for her tummy. So this is the part that takes the longest. Uh, she doesn't chew as fast as usual. So really long pieces of hay take us literally like a minute to get down. So that's where a lot of the time comes into play. But I think it's really important she gets hay to, as I said, keep her teeth nice and to really help her jaw. I want her muscles to stay nice and healthy. Keep on working, little bells. Keep on going. So she's a piggy that prefers if I don't really pet her while she's out because she makes her kind of flinch. She's not used to being pet a ton because she's quite the nervous piggy and it's not her most favorite. So just in case anybody's wondering why I'm not like petting her right now, it's kind of her preference. Sometimes she likes to snuggle, but I find any time right now while she's eating, if I'm touching her too much, she starts flinching, and it just kind of interrupts our eating process. You know, every pig's different. Some pigs would love to be snuggled right now, but she just kind of likes to be on her little pad. So I also use a tiny pad for her to sit on. I was using like a big lap pad or a 1x2 pad. And the more room she had, the more she was able to fight me with eating and would like back up and try to take off. But I find if I have just a little pad, she doesn't want to leave it because the floor is tile and slippery. So it kind of makes feeding her easier because she can't really back up too far. Yeah, because the big pad was a big no. I was starting to get really frustrated. But anyway, you guys get the idea. If you have any questions, uh, you can leave them down below. If you like watching guinea pig videos, learning how to care for us, seeing product hauls or reviews, or really anything else guinea pig, please subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Down below I've left two more videos for you to pick from, so keep on watching!